Hello, my name is Dan Baird, Infinity27. This is the Unreal Authorized Instructor uh, training videos. Um, this topic is Blueprint Introduction, and I have some beginner level um, students who will be guiding through this. We have three. I uh, just want to confirm with yourselves if you just speak up and confirm that you're okay to be recorded. Okay. All good. Oh, so um, we're, where we're going to start? Um, we're going to start with a little presentation. Um, so I've got some slides here. We're going to go through. There's not too much, um, so I'll not bore you. We will be pretty hands on. Um, we're going to be looking at kind of what, where, and how um blueprints are used um some examples of blueprints we're going to look at some um uh, blueprint elements so the different elements of them how to work with them common tasks that you'll do and then there'll be um, a quiz and a interactive section where we try to build uh, together so kind of instruct the instructor based on knowledge that you've got so far so as I say, uh, level is beginner. Uh, duration here should be around 60 minutes. Um, and this is for all disciplines, art, design, developer. Okay, very important that um, the team understands and knows how to use Blueprint because it's a very big part of the engine. And um, it's very nice not to have to find a programmer to implement everything. Okay, if you're able to prototype yourself, able to do, um, you're much more effective as an individual and as part of the team. So uh, the objectives for today are to gain some knowledge. So become familiar with the Unreal Engine's Blueprint Visual Scripting System through a guided tour of the sample project. It's about 30 minutes. Gain an understanding. So we'll test that we have understood what we've learned um, through a recall of the Blueprint concepts and the material covered. It's about 10 minutes, and that'll be in the form of a quiz. And then our application. Uh, very important that we try and apply some of this learning even at an early stage. So we're going to try and collaboratively produce our first blueprints through the interactive assessment that I've set up for you. Okay. Um, now we're going to test our ability to apply our knowledge of logic orient object oriented programming that we already have in the engine. Again, that's about 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, my time is a little off here. Uh, so introduction of five minutes, um, 30 minutes for the knowledge section, uh, 10 minutes for the quiz and about 10 15 minutes for the um, assessment and then we'll cover some next steps uh, the final five minutes so some materials that um we have here we've got our workstations with unreal engine 4.27 um, we've got discord live stream going so you can all see my screen uh, we've also got a live chat in there for you to drop any um, information in any screenshots anything you have trouble with and uh, you should have some note-taking equipment. I recommend Google Docs or Google Keep. Um, those are backed up online and accessible anywhere. So let's start off with the knowledge section, okay? And first of all, um, one of the things to cover. So we have our Epic Games Launcher. Um, so once you've got the Epic Games Launcher, um, you can download the Unreal Engine, okay? Um, it appears in your library um, as an engine version. Um, we don't need to go through the default setup today, um, but one of the things that we need to understand is Unreal Engine is a game engine, okay? So primarily made for games and experiences, but now widely used for much more. And it is programmed in C++. Okay, so the source code is available for you to look at, for you to edit, and um, to make products with, okay, under different licenses. Now, uh, C++ is uh, one of the older languages. It's very powerful, um, but it can be difficult for people to learn. So you guys have learned a bit of Python, I believe, and um, it's a lot more complex than Python in terms of you've got to manage memory, there's pointers, and there's all kinds of other things that you'll not be introduced to at this stage. So um, for kind of programmers who are starting out, for artists and designers who don't want to look at line-by-line uh, -line code like myself, um, Unreal Engine has this nifty system called Blueprints. So basically the what Blueprints are, they're not a separate language, okay, or anything like that. They are um, basically the C++ exposed to the editor, 
in a friendly way, okay, like a high level visual scripting, uh, which uses a node based interface. Um, that's a fancy way of saying it looks very pretty and um, you can kind of drag wires and connect little nodes of logic to get what you want. So I'm just loading up the project here in the background. Okay, um, but remember that Blueprints is simply a way to script code without typing uh, or writing it out. Um, ideal for designers and artists, but programmers will use this too. So they will balance C++ with Blueprints. Okay, there's like a, a point that they meet. So let's bring up a project, standard project here. Um, we have a third person example map inside our project. Uh, across the bottom here, we have our content folder. Okay, so we've got all of the things in here that we'll use. And we have some blueprints for different things. For example, uh, our character would be a blueprint. Okay, and we can see here, we can edit on the right, edit the third person character. Okay, and this is the blueprint editor and what it looks like. Okay, I'll just switch to the event graph view there. So, um, uh, visual example here, okay. Um, what does this look like? Um, we have, um, let's go up here. We have um, an event node, okay. So one of these red nodes. So something happens, a player does something, something happens in the game, an event happens, and then we run some kind of logic, some functions, um, some flow control to basically figure out what it is we want to do when this thing happens, okay. So think of it as cause and effect. When one thing happens, this other thing happens, okay? And it's basically events, functions, and then variables or other types of functions, okay? Um, um, the variables are all values, so like alphanumeric, um, or they are um, some kind of reference, generally, okay? They can be lists, um, such as arrays. Now, uh, blueprints, there are two general types of blueprints that you'll see, okay? Um, this one, the character, is, is, what, is what's known as a class blueprint, okay? They're very common. So most of the blueprints you make are usually a class blueprint. The other type of blueprint is actually for the level. So this level itself, this map in the background here, has its own blueprint, okay? This is a kind of thing brought forward from earlier versions of Unreal, like Unreal Engine 3, um, where you can actually have the level do things like references, do things like logic for opening doors um, and things like this, okay? Um, so there's two main sets, okay? There's the level and the class blueprints. Okay, there are other types of blueprints out there, um, but we'll not cover those. Things like uh, data-only blueprints, blueprint interfaces for communicating, um, blueprint macro libraries. Okay, we don't need to remember those right now, though, just to let you know that they exist. Um, the level blueprints are per map, so there's one for this map specifically. Uh, the class blueprints, the classes, are kind of modular actors like the, the character here and... Um, they appear as instances in levels, okay? So we create a, an instance, we instantiate um, one of the classes into the level, okay? So we have an individual unique copy and we can see these in the world outliner in the right. Okay, so um, examples of what blueprints can be used for, okay? Um, we could use blueprints to say, create a playable game character with functionality. Uh, so it handles inputs from the player. Um, uh, so kind of press an X button does this, Y does that, Z another thing. Uh, we play animations on a skeleton uh, for locomotion. Okay, so we have this mesh that can move. Um, that can all happen through the power of blueprints here. Um, handle actions such as jumping or shooting, um, kind of when there's mouse input or touch input. Yeah, okay. Um, and yeah, storing values. So on the left, you'll see there's some values stored here. Okay, uh, some default values there on the right. Okay, so things like hit points, equipment, skills, this can all be stored in there. Um, another thing that we can also store, uh, create, sorry, is a class, uh, sorry, is a blueprint, is um, we could create the HUD, like the user interface, um, and this can read variables from other blueprints and then display that information to the player as text and visuals. Okay, so think of, hey, I want to have a little health um, bar here, I want an ammo counter, I want my playtime up the top. Okay, so I can tell what my best score is. 
Um, these UIs could be used to create interactable menus. So yeah, when you press pause, you have the option to kind of resume, quit, go to settings and things like that. Okay, so you can create in the UI blueprints buttons that respond to mouse clicks, uh, gamepad input, touch events, things like that. Okay, for use across a wide variety of platforms. And then another example, third example would be um, maybe you want to create some customizable prefabs um, with construction script. Uh, what this means is kind of you can say add some lights to the level, which will dynamically match the materials the, that they use to a color that the light is. Um, or maybe you want to create a little box that when you drop it into the level, it scatters foliage procedurally around, okay, and places those meshes in the environment. So you, as an environment, a lot of us, you don't have to go around and hand place every asset. Um, maybe you want to have a spline, okay, that generates a procedural mesh, something like a pipe, a road, uh, branches on a tree, things like that. So you can do um, some operations that maybe aren't just logic uh, gameplay logic um you can create those using blueprints as well so like i say um kind of artists designers and programmers will benefit from learning blueprints okay so um let's cover what the class blueprint elements are since class blueprints are the most common okay um we'll just switch back over here so um on the blueprint screen uh, we've just got these different areas labeled okay this is directly from the unreal engine documentation so we know that we're using the correct um words the correct names for things okay the correct language so uh number one we have the menu okay so this is for things like saving loading open different windows number two we've got the toolbar across the middle there at the top and uh, that's containing buttons that control multiple functions such as shortcuts for save compiling playing um checking the default settings for the blueprint and then we've got uh, on the left hand side there, uh, number three, we've got the components window. This is for adding or selecting components of a blueprint, such as the mesh, its collision, etc. All of these different things that make up the blueprint. Okay. Um, number four, we have the My Blueprint panel. And what this is, it's a hierarchical breakdown of the nodes that are within the blueprint. Uh, things like which graphs are in here, which functions, uh, which macros, variables, um, which event dispatches. Okay, we can see them all listed down the left and organized nicely there for quick access and editing. Um, in number five, the, the central, the main, the main meat of it there is the, um, graph editor panel okay so you've got uh, kind of the viewport where you can look at what this thing looks like you've got the event graph to start programming logic in uh, and you've got the construction script which we mentioned which is um, for kind of uh, when it's first instantiated what kind of uh, functionality do we want to, to run uh, number six on the right hand side you've got the details panel okay um, so anything that you're selecting generally um, the details panel will um, change to match the properties of the node or the variable that you're looking at okay so you can change uh, sorry the component of variable that you're looking at so you can change some settings as needed um, there are some situational uh, points here um, things like timeline editors can appear um, we can have debugging uh, you can have the search functionality across the bottom um, so there is quite a lot there but these are the six main elements that you need to know okay so um, working with blueprints. Yeah. So let's have a quick look again at uh, our character blueprint. Okay. So um, what do we have? Okay. So just a general breakdown of what's in the event graph here. Okay. So as I mentioned before, we have different types of nodes. Okay. So you can see we've got red node, which is an event node. Something happens. Um, we've got blue nodes and green nodes, which are functions. Um, we also have um, low control nodes. Um, let's see if we've got some here. Yep, the gray nodes here, which is things like branching. So that's your general if statement. Um, and then we've got some pins and wires. So we've got pins and wires flying all over the place. Um, we've got white wires, which are the execution. So when the event happens, move to this next node and process what's here. Uh, we've got colored wires, okay, all different 
pipes colors um, and all the wires are data wires they are essentially moving data from one place to another or kind of feeding them through um, we can see uh, the world direction here comes from um, this vector um, which in turn uh, comes from a rotator which uses a float as an input okay so you kind of you build you can build data by connecting these wires together and put them into the input on here okay um, always important to remember that your blueprints uh, how you read them and how you should design them is that you should do the flow from left to right okay you don't want to kind of have your your nodes flying all over the shop here um, kind of backwards up down uh, they're meant to be read left to right and that's the best way to keep them organized um what else do we have in here we have um uh input events okay so we've got um events that are input so you see input access input turn input action these are all pre-programmed okay list of inputs which can be remapped um, through the inputs settings in here um, so let's have a look we go down to input and you can see that all of these action mappings and access mappings have already been defined and they are then tied to an input um, whether that's on a virtual reality um, input keyboard mouse gamepad etc okay and um, we've also got <coughs> excuse me um, custom events okay um, looking at this one we don't have a custom event necessarily but we can create a custom event and uh, do a custom event so we can actually create our own custom events now they're not tied to inputs but we can still call these okay so that we can get them to fire okay and then we could maybe print something there in the console a little hello okay so we can call these events um just like we can have these called when there's an input okay and you notice it says custom event under the bottom okay and um, there are some other um pre-programmed events uh say for example we have um uh, the capsule component here um we can have maybe an on component begin overlap Press the little plus button here, it'll generate one for us. We can also search for these event uh, tick is another one. Um, so there's a bunch of already pre-programmed common uh, ones that are here. Uh, tick, for example, just is called every frame um, unless it's changed to be something else. Um, and then on component begin overlap is, hey, this thing has collided. Something has collided Okay, with this thing. Um, fire off this logic that's on this chain here. And what we can see also is that we have, um, whether we drag off one of the execution pins or we right click on some empty space, we have a list of things that we can find. There's a very large list. Um, it's even bigger if you turn off context sensitive, okay? Because con uh, context sensitive will try and guide you to what's possible within this blueprint. Um, and then you can also search. Uh, so yeah, kind of, if I want to search for print string, I can see everything that comes up with print. I've got print text, I've got print string, I've got a whole bunch of things that are trying to print data as well. Okay. Um, and then what we'll also notice is we've got um, a whole bunch of pins. Okay, these little pins here. So these are inputs and outputs. Okay, so for example, on the begin overlap here, we have some information that comes through. So when this thing actually overlaps the capsule, and um, we have things like, hey, what was the other actor that came out? Um, uh, which component was overlapped? Okay. Um, we can then feed these in. So as you can see, uh, you can take output data and connect it to inputs um, to basically uh, build your code. Okay. Um, one other thing that you might see with nodes is a collapse of nodes. Okay. Um, in our studio, we don't tend to use these too much. Um, but what you can do is uh, say there's this whole bunch of nodes here and they get collapsed down. Okay. Um, there might be like a, a one like this and you're like, oh, this looks different. It's not a collad one. Um, and what you can do is you can double click to go inside and you'll actually see that there is um, code inside there. Okay. Again, inputs and outputs. And these are kind of like little tunnels. You can imagine them as, okay. Um, we can also um, 
have these nodes collapsed down to, excuse me, just double click there to get my phone graph back, to functions or to macros, okay, which will appear on the left hand side. Uh, I can simply um, expand this node to get everything back there, okay. Uh, but as I say, there's collapse the nodes, collapse to a function, uh, collapse to a macro. Now, um, variables. So you'll have noticed that there are some variables here. I can drag them out, I can get them. I can drag them out, I can set them. And um, obviously what you can do with these is you can perform calculations, um, access the data here. So uh, maybe I want to get the base turn rate um, because I want to increase that base turn rate through some um, logic that I'm programming. So I'll get that value. Uh, maybe I'm just gonna plus. Okay, so float plus float, um, nice context sensitive help. I want to add 100 to that value and I want to set that back up to what it is. Okay, and then I can plug this into my event. Say when I press a certain key or a certain button is pressed in the options menu, and then this value can be adjusted by getting it, doing something with it, and then setting it. Okay, try not leave too much mess in here. Um, there's different uh, types, different colors for the different types of variables. So that was a float. Uh, but if I create a new variable here by taking the little button or go and add new variable, um, I can see that this one's Boolean. Um, this one I can press on here. I can see the different types. So he has the common types, um, things that you'll be familiar with, um, strings, integers, um, bytes, vectors. Um, there is a whole list here. Uh, you can hover over them. You can have a look if you're not familiar with the types um, online, and these are standard uh, types. Look in the documentation. There's also things like structures, interface, object references. Um, as I said before, these things, these variables don't necessarily just have to be um, numbers and letters. Um, they can also reference, say, an actor that's inside of the level. Okay. Again, accessible on this side. Um, and what you'll notice is that we can sometimes convert these things inside of here. So say I want to uh, print something out and this takes a string in here. Okay, the pin is uh, connected. Um, I wanna get my player character from my list. Um, and this is an object reference. Um, generally, if I try to connect to something that's not compatible, I'll say this isn't compatible with this type. Um, however, if there's a conversion possible, okay, it'll come up like this, and it'll automatically do the conversion for me. So it's actually going to turn this object reference by getting its display name as a string, and it's going to then feed it through. Okay. Um, so that is possible as well. Um, there's private and public variables. Okay, so um, if I want to say, um, have one of these variables become public, Okay, so I can click this little eyedropper here. Our variables are now public and it's editable on each instance of the blueprint. Uh, what does that mean necessarily? Um, if I select my character here, I can now see on the right hand side, we should have, if I have the third person character, if I compile that, um, should have an option to. Oh, that helps if I'm not in the world settings, if I'm in the details panel for this, um, change the default base turn rate, okay? Um, again, if I make this one public, it appears here as well. Now, obviously you don't want to make everything public by default, um, that's bad design. You wanna only make things public um, when they're needed, okay? Um, it's also possible to get um, references to, so there's variables here, but there's also possible to get references to, um, say, the camera, or the boom arm, or any of these other objects by dragging them in. Okay, uh, and we can get, we can do set as, we can do all kinds of stuff here. Okay, to adjust each um, instance of the blueprint after it's been instantiated. Okay, um, some tips and shortcuts. So yeah, there is a search function. Um, so you see this find results down here. Um, if I search for um, character. It'll show me everything inside this blueprint of the character. I can double click it to get to it. That's nice. Um, if I want to search not just this blueprint, but for any other places, I can use finding all blueprints. Um, just be careful that um, 
depending on what you put in here and how big your project is, you can get a lot of results. Okay. Um, so that's just handy. Um, so there is some other shortcuts as well. We've got, um, we could right click on a pin and we can get actions like promote to variable. These are all context sensitive. Okay. So um, say we promote this uh, value to a variable, it will create the variable on the side there. And if uh, it's kindly put it underneath, uh, if we want, we can then adjust this here instead of having it hard coded inside of, of here. Okay. Um, we can hover over the um, the different um, wires to basically get a highlight of what's connected. Um, we can use, say, Alt left mouse button to disconnect some of these wires. Um, we can also use, I think it is Control. Yep, Control left button will actually drag the wire and reposition it to another place. Okay, so I can connect it to something else. Uh, and that again will work for all the wires that are connected there. Okay. Um, and then we can double left mouse button on a wire. Um, say we don't like how this is, is rooted and we want to kind of clean some of this up. We can reroute it by double click and we get this little node that we can adjust. Okay. Um, uh, another top tip is, um, don't get super hung up on all of the things like uh, kind of the position of, of your wires, whether they're straight or not. Okay. I could show you that we can right click and straighten these connections. You will waste more of your time doing that. Um, you will waste hours of your life <laughs> over, over projects, getting them to look very nice and probably um, deleting that code at some later point. Okay. So um, now we're going to move on to some common tasks. So, um, Things like making blueprints, triggering logic from events, and working with variables. Um, I just want to jump back for a second over here. Um, now, making blueprints. Um, before we look at actually making blueprints, there's uh, something that we need to remind ourselves of, okay? It comes from object-oriented programming, and this is inheritance, okay? Which is the idea of having parent and child objects, okay? Um, so can anyone tell me, uh, just in one brief sentence, what inheritance is? Keep settings and statistics. Future. Not same thing. If you make a child blueprint or something, the child will inherit all of the things from the parent, which means it'll have the same blueprint programming, it'll have the same properties, it'll have the same stack meshes, collision boxes, everything. So everything's the same as the parent. And then what's not inherited, you might do. Sure. So yes, um, the um, child will inherit from the parent things like its um, variables, its functions, etc. It's, it's actually look and feel through components. Okay, very good. Okay, so um, inheritance. So in Unreal Engine, we have um, a very common base object is called a U object. Okay, so um, a lot of the things will inherit from this object, okay? So there's a parent-child relationship all the way down. So um, I mentioned that actors, okay, are one thing that we drag and drop into scenes, okay? So that's the one we come across a lot. Um, these are our class blueprints. Um, we have other things though, we have component and we have widget. Uh, if I just bring this down one level, you can see how that pans out. Um, so we've got, say, from an actor, you can have a pawn, which is something the player can control. So it's inside the environment and the player can move it around. Uh, maybe it's something like a collectible. So it's just an object that sits there, but it has some kind of functionality. Um, I've also put there a UI as an example of kind of a, a child of a widget. Okay, so use interface for, um, for the screen. Uh, if we keep going down, um, a, that pawn could break down into a character, which is a special type of pawn. It's, again, something that can, the player can move around, but it has things like a character locomotion. So the um, um, the model um, can actually be animated to be running around, things like jumping, uh, swimming, flying, things like that. Okay. 
Um, the collector will could break down maybe into a couple of different things. Maybe there's a treasure in the level that you can collect. Maybe there's some health packs that you can collect as well. And um, these could uh, be children of that collectible. If we want to go one further, um, our characters, we could break down. We could start making different types of characters um, that the player can possess. So we have Jane, we have John, um, the health packs could break down. We could have big health pack, we could have small health pack, and they are all getting the um, benefits of the parent, uh, but they can then be customized to be different. Okay, so just like in uh, programming, um, object-oriented program you've done so far, it is just about separating out types of things. Okay. Okay. So we just quickly jump back over. So inside here, how do we make some of these things? So if we wanted to make um, any blueprints, we could go to add a blueprint class, which will bring up the pick parent class window. You can also right click on some space, uh, create a blueprint that way. Okay, so say I want to create something as a character, just select character. If I don't want to create um, something from these parents, I can open up all classes and I can get all of the um, uh, subclasses underneath them, okay? Uh, so under actor, we can see that breaks down for all different types of actors, okay? And then we can go further underneath those to get what we want. Or we can use the search if we know what it is we're looking for. So if we're looking to make a child of Jane, the character, which is a pawn, okay, then we can uh, type Jane in here and we can then select her to make her child, okay? Um, triggering uh, logic from events. So um, let's have a look. Uh, if we create a blueprint class, that is just something from an actor, my BP, we open it up. There's nothing in here, okay, because it's just a basic actor that has no uh, default value. We go into the event graph. Um, we can see that there are some pre programmed events in here that are just sitting waiting to be used, such as uh, begin play, um, actor begin overlap, event tick. Okay, so we can simply uh, drag off and we can get it to do something. Okay, so what kind of logic do we want? We add this in here. Okay, and as I said before, it's cause and effect. Okay, so the, we always have to think, what's my event that's going to happen for me to then perform my logic? Okay, so when play begins, um, we want to print out uh, hello for this character. Okay, so when this character is in level, uh, when play begins, you'll get a hello message the top okay so it's about choosing an event whether that's begin play overlap custom something else uh calling a function okay so you've got preset functions that you can call um, or we could have inherited functions that we've created um, so say if we make a function in here called my function and then we make a child of this blueprint um, we can get access to that my function okay um, can add some um, thing here, print string, and then we can call my function both here and in any of the children. Okay. And then working with variables, um, how do we create variables? We saw before, we simply press here, um, or we can right click and promote any uh, value to a variable, um, which will create it nicely in here for us. And we can uh, double click or F2 to change the name, my variable, and we can edit any of the details on the right hand side. First, you'll notice before we can add a default value, we must compile the blueprint. Okay, toggle that on and off, add a tooltip. Uh, maybe we can even change if we decide that actually we don't want a Boolean, now we need something else. However, we will get. Um, an error message, not an error message, but a um, prompt if it's going to cause any issues. Okay. Um, how do we get and set variables? Again, we can drag them out. Uh, I believe the shortcuts, if you hold control, it will automatically do a getter. If you hold um, alt, it will do a setter. And then we can kind of hook all these things up. Okay. So basic functions, common tasks. Um, exposing it to the editor, it is simply make it public. Okay. Um, the two differences here, um, yellow public and the green public is simply that it has a tooltip that we've written. Okay. So don't worry about that. Right. 
that's it. So we're going to jump on to the quiz. Um, if you look inside Google Wait, Class. Yep. Um, so we're on the understanding section. I'm going to change the uh, permissions now. Okay. Um, uh, quiz is available in the classroom. I'm just going to load that up on my bottom screen here. There's eight questions uh, that will earn you 100 Dan points. Okay. Um, 10 minutes. Uh, there is a Dan points prize that was handed down to me from my teacher who was also called Dan. Um, so hopefully um, it may it may continue to go down to another Dan. Um, I'll see. Okay, so uh, one thing here is uh, use your notes and online references, but no conferring. Okay, um, so we're going to run 10 minutes from now. Let me just adjust the timings here. Blueprints. Yeah, so refresh your classroom, refresh your page, and access should be there for you. Um, it will require it to be signed in um, as usual uh, to a Google account because it is a Google form for which we're collecting the results to feed through to your um, marks. Okay. So let's begin. for the sake of the training and this is the quiz that we have um, so we've got um, three questions worth 30 points on what where and how um, basically what is a blueprint what are the two most common types of blueprints where can you find blueprints inside the unreal engine project um, one question on the blueprint elements with 30 points um, so the standard blueprint class ui is made of the following six elements provided a blurred version of the image uh, as a kind of prompt and some options there. And then working with blueprints and common tasks. So four questions with 40 points total is a bit more difficult. Um, kind of which way do we read the execution flow? The colored pins on these nodes are what? Uh, and a true or false question, um, which uh, covers basically thinking about inheritance and um, how the variables um, are public or private. A little one to catch them up there, hopefully. Um, we are super happy for people who make mistakes um, because we do like to discuss these uh, so people get better understanding by making mistakes and not being embarrassed to do so um, instead of just trying to remember a lot of information. Um, and then uh, Blueprints is, a, is an event-driven system. Kind of uh, select the common events you'll encounter from the list below. Just pause temporarily for the students to complete their 10 minutes. Oh. Okay, okay, we all done? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Okay. So um, let's go over our quiz. So what is a blueprint? Um, we're just going to go around kind of counterclockwise here in the room. And if you can give me an answer, if you get the answer wrong, um, we'll move on to the next person. So uh, in the interior of blueprints, what, where, and how, uh, what best describes a blueprint, Daniel? Uh, I kind of really read it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's in seven to day. So we've got a program for replicating 3D objects in a game engine, another version of C++ meant for designers and artists, high-level visual scripting using a node-based interface. High-level visual scripting using node-based Excellent. Um, Quinn, what's the most common two types of blueprints? Can you remember? So we've got level blueprint and file blueprint, class blueprint and level blueprint, or skeletal mesh and interfaces. Skeletal mesh and interfaces. Yeah. Incorrect. Uh, it's the 
so I can't read them, but one of them, two of them say level and one of them level. Yeah, so we've got level blueprint and file blueprint, or class blueprint and level blueprint. Class, class. class and level, correct. So where do you find blueprints inside the Unreal Engine project, Daniel? Uh, under the toolbar, file blueprints, inside the game engine installation folder, under C, program files, epic games, or within the content browser. In the content browser. Excellent. Dan, is there any way you could zoom in from? So it might be more can. It is, there we go. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And standard blueprint class UI is made of the six following elements. Which one are they? What's number one? Uh, menu. Yep. Toolbar. Number two, toolbar. Number three? Uh, components window. Components. Number four, Quinn? Is that on the details? It is not the details panel, unfortunately. My blueprint panel. My blueprint panel. Excellent. And uh, the six. viewport. Uh, five, sorry. Uh, ah, it is not the viewport. Graphic. It is the graph editor, yes. Caught you out there. And Quinn, the final one on the right, number six, is? Uh, it is the details panel, yes. So on working with blueprints and common tasks, um, we have uh, which way do you read the execution flow in blueprints? Right to left. Right to left? Left to right. Left to right. Uh, since Dan, you corrected on that one. Uh, Quinn, uh, the colored pins on these nodes are? Yes. That one was a little easy because it was the only one with the actual information. Yeah, I think it helped one actually. Yeah. And then, um, true or false, Toby, the, uh, by exposing the true. Um, so I'll just run through this by exposing, i.e., making public this level variable in my child blueprint, which is the labeled woman. I can get access to the same variable health in any of its sibling blueprints, for example, man, because they share the same parent. Um, character. Where you made the health blueprint. So, so the health, health blueprint in the child. Sorry, uh, level. Uh, apologies. Yeah, I've mislabeled this. I've rechanged it. So, um, level variable. It's this one here. Uh, guys, can I get your attention one second? Uh, level here um, is exposed publicly. Okay, and which means it's editable in the instance that gets dragged into the level. However, if I've made level inside of the uh, child blueprint, which is woman, and not the parent, then I can't get access to that same variable inside the sibling blueprints. Okay, I apologize for, um, I should have changed this health to level, I quickly swapped them around. Um, but yeah, um, this one is false. I would have to cast to a woman to change her um, variables, but as man, for example, um, I wouldn't have level inside of mine, okay? Because I am a separate child, I'm a sibling. Um, what has been edited on her does not apply to me, okay? And then blueprints can be thought of as event-driven system, okay? Remember, cause and effect. Uh, select three standard built-in non-custom events you'll commonly encounter from the list. Uh, we'll just take one from each person. Uh, Dan? Uh, event tick. Event tick. Quinn? Uh, on begin play. On begin play. Begin and begin overlap. Okay, okay. Tick, 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 tick. Do, do. Correct answer is true. Um, I need to double check this one. That's my fault. Okay, apologies. All <laughs> right, all right, not late at night. Yeah, um, I think I've changed the uh question, um, and then not correct at that. Okay, it's so my fault. So I will receive. Minus 30 points um, to myself for that. Okay, and we'll give you a bonus sweets if there's any sweets left, but I think they've been destroyed. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so the last thing that we need to move on to is application. So we need to apply this. Okay. So 
let's do this through creation okay getting your hands dirty in the engine is the best way okay now since we need to do this live what we'll do is i'll be the uh keyboard monkey we'll say okay i'm happy to take that role um i want you guys to tell me how we create an item that can be collected a character who can hold items and a ui um, to display the total items you don't need to know anything about unreal to do this necessarily um <clears throat> But um, what we do want to do is just use logic and kind of uh, spoken instructions. Okay, so we need to make this, and then we need to add this. We need to then send that information here, etc. Okay. So we're yeah. going to take one. We work to you. You guys are going to be instructing me. Okay, uh, live on the stream. Okay. So um, first thing I'm going to do, okay, to give you a point of reference, is I'm not going to just jump straight into the engine. I need to do some planning. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about inheritance, first of all, because we're talking about different types of blueprints communicating with each other in some way. Okay, so um, we've been asked to create an item. So we're going to pick treasure, um, a character. So we're going to use just a standard character and then also um, uh, user interface. So we're going to create a widget user interface. Okay. So how does this work? Let's just remember the steps from previously. Okay, item that can be collected, character who can hold items, UI displaying the total items. So um, first of all, we're going to need that item. Okay. And then we're going to need a character. And the character needs to be able to hold those items. Okay, so there's some interaction there. Okay, some data flow in a specific direction from the treasure to the character, okay? Then we're gonna want a user interface because we wanna take that information that's stored in the character and place it in the user interface, okay? To read it and display it, okay? So that's our setup. Treasure, character, user interface. Information about the amounts of treasures to the character, character stores those, these, those go to the interface, okay? Oh, so we jump in the engine. Um, let's just go to the top level. We'll just use this third person example map. Um, just turn off the level filters, apologies. Um, let's disregard my BP for now. Um, we'll just make everything in this top level. Um, we'll not think about organization. So um, Quinn, what's the first thing we're going to do here? Yeah. Yeah, right click, make the new blueprint. Excellent. Remove the shortcuts. Um, and what uh, one are we going to make first? The treasure. The treasure. Um, so um, what should we we make that as a child of? An actor. Yeah, an actor. Um, we don't necessarily have to have collectible in here. Um, for all purposes, we can just make this a treasure uh, an actor okay um obviously if we want to build the whole thing we would make it a collectible and then treasure health etc so let's just go and make it a child of the actor okay treasure treasure Hooray. right now we've got our treasure um what was the next thing we need to do create a character yeah create a character again gonna do the same thing from class Select so character, nice and easy. Hooray. Then, what did we need to do, Toby? You need to make it so the treasure can pick it up, or interact it with rather than on collision. Oh. On begin of the land, rather. Excellent. So, we need to go into the treasure. And we need to make it so that we can overlap this object and um, do that. So um, as a little hint, we can get a collision component. Um, so we can get, say, a box collision. OK, that's our collision right there. I'm happy with that. Um, we can come down here, and we can do um, on component, component begin overlap. Just move this across a little bit. And then, yeah, um, we can hook that up here. Um, once it comes across, we need to do something. Okay, now 
we're a little bit stuck here because we're going to need to think about this relationship between the treasure and the character, right? So how is the treasure, if it's being overlapped, how is it, how is this data going to be stored in the character? What do we use for storing data? Yeah, variable. Um, so we've got, oh, let's get rid of the third person character and that one just to stop any confusion. And let's get um, my character here. So we want a variable inside here, yeah? Um, for counting an amount of treasure, say, what's a good variable type? Well, for um, an uh, integer. I'll integer? Yeah. yeah. Cool. What did you say there? Wealth? Wealth would be a good name. Like a currency. Oh, right. Okay. So the name. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So let's call this yeah, wealth. Great name. You can make. Okay. So we've got this in here. Um, do we need to do anything else with it at all? So we don't need a visible sun in front. So we can say that it needs to be changed. Um, yeah, so um, you're, you're probably going to say um, make public and fall into my trap, right? Um, but yeah, we don't need to make it public because we don't need to expose that. Um, and like you've said, um, it only needs to be updated when the, the collision happens. Yeah, we don't need to actually change it in the editor here. Um, so that's good. So let's save that and compile. So we've got wealth. Uh, our wealth is zero, uh, measly zero treasures. The treasure, however, you could put a variable on that that is public because you could set coins to be worth different amounts. Yeah, the treasures could be worth different amounts if we set um, kind of a value inside the treasure. Um, so that we want to do that. So yeah. Okay. So let's create a variable um, called value. Yeah. And it needs to be um, float integer string integer. Integer. Okay. Let's go with integer. And what's the default value for our thing? Should it be zero? One. one? Okay. So yeah. Um, so all treasures should at least be worth one. Okay. Um, anything else we need to do? prep before we start looking at how we do this uh, connection here. Make the widget for the user interface. Make the widget for the user interface. Uh, we could, probably one step ahead of where we need um, to be. Put a string on event of that to see whether it actually does pick up or something on that. Okay, yeah, we could use this to just confirm that um, this overlaps. Um, let's have a look and see what we've got so far. So we drag drop out our treasure. Should probably give that treasure a static mesh so you can see it. Yeah, we could probably give the uh, treasure a static mesh so we can see it. That's uh, a mesh. Sphere. Sphere, pancake, exposure. Sphere, pancake, exposure. Static mesh. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go uh, sphere, you said, yeah? Yeah, more like point. Yeah, okie dokie. There we go. We can see our treasure. Fantastic. Um, however, this is not our character. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to switch out this character. Um, if you just bear with me for a second. Yeah, so auto possess him. We're going to turn that off because we're going to put our character in here. Okay. Zero. Hit play. Oh no, nothing. Oh, because he's not a he's not a player actor, he's just a regular actor. So what have we done wrong? So we have uh, my character who comes from a parent class of character. Okay. I'm going to input so moving. Yeah, so inputs for moving and things like that. Um oh dear. Um we've got nothing here. Um, we have a character movement component, but it looks like we would have to program all our own movement. What could we do um, to get this up and running a bit faster? Just use the one that was already there. Yeah, we could use the one that was already there. So let's just uh, see if we can go back a little bit and get our guy. So um, we're going to have a look in here for filter blueprints. Uh, like this, and I'm just going to have a look. There's our third person character. Let's stick him back in to make sure he's possessed by default. 
I will hit play and we can see that we have the character. Oh, something else is wrong. You kind of move forwards and backwards. Kind of move forwards and backwards. Okay. Very strange. Just double check. I notice his feet are on the floor. Nope. So I move from left and right. Okay. Uh, do we quit and go home? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, something here isn't quite right. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, what did I do before when I was making a mess? Wait, disconnected the. Yeah, I disconnected some of these cables, didn't I? So that wasn't very good. So I'm hooking up my execution pins, which are from the event, which are turning and look up. And moving them across here to add pitch in your and I've reconnected the data cables. Uh, sorry, the cables the the data wires here so that that data comes through correctly. Okay. The movement input ones. I need. Movement input ones to the right. Yes. Um. Well spotted. So I'm going to hook that up. Is that that done? So yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, how about this? Turn rate. Aha. Okay, so yeah, um, one of the tips that I'll give is when you're learning, um, always be conscious that once you start changing things, if you're not keeping track of that, that's probably going to come back and bite you. Okay, so let's save that now. Let's see. Yay, we're back. Okay, this character is a bit different to my character. Okay, so I'm just going to open them up. Um, what do we need to add inside here versus what we had inside our character? Uh, on collision component. So let's just have a quick look at this again. Um, what do we have to have in the character to be able to deal with what we're trying to get from the treasure? I'm going to be a variable for how much treasure we've got. Yes, and um, we created the variable for treasure inside our custom blueprint, but we haven't made it here. Okay, so we want to create our own one here. Again, I made some mess here um, with a bunch of different stuff, but we agreed on an integer. I believe it was called wealth. Okay, and we decided not to expose it, but we do want a default value of uh, one. One? Zero, zero, zero. yes. <laughs> right, tricky, okay, sorry. To be fair, it could be anything. It could be anything, yeah. No, does the character start with anything? It could be Nick, uh, but then you'd have to make it float, not it. We could start in debt. Yeah. could start in debt, yes. <laughs> well, that's the point. The name of the game. Okay. Yeah. So we've got the um, blueprint over here uh, for the character and one for the treasure, okay? And we can access the treasure here. It's a blueprint. And say, right, we're going to try and um, overlap and print hello. So overlap. Oh. No, what's happening? The collision box is inside of the mesh. The collision box is inside of the mesh. That is correct. So what we can see is the collision's not large enough to, to escape outside of here and for us to collide with it. Okay. So let's scroll that nice and big. Compile. Hit play. Oh, hello. Yeah. Excellent. Now, what if, okay, what if I wasn't wanting anything but the player to trigger this collision? Uh, what part of this to could I use? Um, I probably wouldn't do a cast. I'd probably do something a little bit simpler oh, with these right data there. pins. Yeah. yeah, I could check the value of this. The other is equal to a specific type. And uh, my type would be a third person. Look on the spot, right? Example. Nope. I'm not going to say person. A third person. I could cast it to any type of what player actor. What do you mean by that? I could check that it's a pawn, yeah. So is it actually something that the player will be in control of 
um, versus just a regular actar like uh, a fruit laying on the ground or something like that. Okay. Um, but we're going to select this one here. But uh, good thing about inheritance here, yeah, because obviously, depending on if we switch characters, that will make a difference as to what's actually coming out here. Um, so what we could do then is um, what kind of um, node would we use to uh, to check? Yeah. Um, uh, well, branch. Branch, yeah. So we've got a Boolean variable, whether this is true or false, and we want to branch. So we want to do an if statement, essentially, in code, yeah? So you can do control B. If this is true, then the shortcut, right? yeah. get this. Mm. Um, so on true, we're going to say hello. On false, we're going to do nothing. Okay. So let's just check we still work. Oh, what's happened? Uh, you can bring up the blueprint menu and have it on the side so you can see what's happening to follow the feed. Yeah, so um, we can say debug this blueprint. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to. <clears throat> Um, check for the treasure that we've got selected inside here and see if we can see what this looks like when we play it. We're going to use a um, new editor window. And I'm just going to bring them up and we're going to have a look. Oh, we're getting the um, component begin overlap is running, but the, um, the branch here is not coming back as true. Okay, so when we're checking for third person character, blueprint class, it's coming back as false. Okay. So maybe we click on the the player character in the level control B and find it there, and then see oh, what exactly what it's called. Um, so we find the character inside here, and we find exactly what it is called. It is called a third-person character okay. blueprint. Okay. What we'll do is we'll skip the check for now, okay? I'll let you guys figure that one out. Um, what we'll do is once the overlap begins, we're going to do uh, some blueprint communication, uh, which is covered in a different lesson. I'm going to cast to our third person character. Okay. Um, my object reference needs to be the thing that's coming in. So this is essentially check and is the thing that's coming in this third person character. If it is, then we're going to access its wealth. Okay. And we can do get as and set as. Okay. So we want to set the wealth of the thing, right? Um, what should we feed in here though um, to set the wealth? Uh, so you want to pull another get well, and then you want to get a, a plus in it here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, with your default blueprint, and then you want to add whatever the value oh, sorry. of the whatever the value of the treasure is, which is one I think is one. Yeah. yeah so we're going to get the wealth, and then we're going to add to it another integer, which is the one that we have stored locally here, which is the value of it. And then, then you declare the final thing. And then we're going to connect the final thing. So yeah. And once we cast to it, we're basically using this um, node here. So we're, as the third person character, we're now uh, imitating them. Um, we are going to set the wealth, get the wealth, add a value to it, and then set that wealth. OK. And we need to make sure we connect up all our data wires, otherwise we'll have a bad time. OK. And then what could we do is a little debug here. Let's do a print string. And let's use a conversion. Yeah, just to get the value of this. OK, so that we can uh, double check that it is actually working. So there's one, there's two, there's three. It's four, it's five. Okay, that's pretty good. It uh, looks like we're setting the wealth and increasing the value. Okay. Um, so I mentioned before about making uh, this public. Um, so actually, what we can do is drag out a second copy. A little shortcut I'm going to here use here is Alt 
left click drag um, on the translation and um, i'm going to look down in the details panel and i'm going to set my if i compile i'm going to set my value of this one for a nice n okay so let's have a little play one two three but this boy gives us 13 23 33 okay so that was very handy to set that public. Um, yeah, good choice. Right, so our treasure setup should be done. And we now also have treasure flown from uh, values for treasure flown from here to the character where we're storing them as wealth. Okay. So, Dan, you mentioned that we need to create the user interface, the, the hood for the player. Okay. And then um, the next step would be to send the information from there out to this user interface, okay? Because we don't want to have to rely on print string. Um, we only want to use that for development, okay? So first of all, what do we have to do? Right yeah, right-click in the enter space, yeah, blueprint the class. Something to do with widgets somewhere. I don't know what it's called. Widget component. Mm. Hmm. So okay. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a new widget a different way. Okay. So I'm actually going to go here to user interface and I'm going to select widget blueprint. Okay. Um, you'll notice the icon here is set. Um, all of these, um, you can get shortcuts basically for all of these. So you don't have to go through the blueprint class each time. Okay. So. Um, my cool ui now to get this to appear on the screen what we're going to do is we're going to actually ask um we can do this multiple ways but we're just going to ask the character on begin play to spawn a copy of this um widget and pull it onto the screen okay we'll cover um that in another lesson um so we're gonna um do, 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 we're gonna create a widget Okay, um, we're going to select our widget class, which is my cool UI, and we're going to um, uh, do, 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 add to viewport this one here. Okay. Now, nothing's happening so far because we actually need to go into this editor. Now, this editor isn't the same. If you remember um, back in the inheritance, widgets are not um, actors, okay? So they have um, a different layout for them, okay? So you'll look here and you'll be like, wow, this is very different. Um, what we have is a designer tab and a graph over here. Okay, now the graph doesn't have the exact same setup, um, but it's got exactly what we need. A lot of the windows that you encounter in um, here will deal with blueprints. The layouts will be different, okay? So inside the designer, what I'm gonna do is I need a way to represent um, uh, the text, yeah, um, which we're gonna bring in. So let's just stick this right in the middle here. And what we can do is we can set this, okay, we can bind this to a value, okay? So we'll come in here soon and we'll add a binding in here. Okay. So um, what we did before, if I jump back to the treasure, is we cast to the character, okay? So we took control of the character, accessed some of its variables, made some changes. Okay, we can also apply this principle um, here. So as the UI, we could get um, the information from the character. Okay. Um, let's try the same principle. Okay, cast to um, third person character. And then as the third person character, get wealth okay so we just need to collect that variable okay in the same manner that we did before as you mentioned probably um 
And then we can simply convert that, just put it out, and this should display on our screen the value that we need. Now, when I go to compile, I get a problem. Um, it says here the type of object is undetermined. So I've got a problem here with this little node. And it says I need to connect something to this cast to imply a specific type. So what it's basically saying to me is um, you need to point out which instance in the level, okay, so which one of the characters, okay, even though there's only one, which one of these characters inside the world currently is going to be the one that I need to get the value from, okay? And um, a nice little shortcut here is we can get the um, player character by simply using this function, okay? It's a PR function, which just basically means that it doesn't have one of these execution um, pins in it. It basically provides this function without having to be part of the main line. It's very nice. It's going to spit out the character that we've got for player index zero. From programming, why is it player index zero? Because everything starts at zero. Yeah. Um, so whenever you've got a list, like an array view, um, you start at zero, position zero. So the only player in the game of a single player game isn't player one, it's player zero. Okay. Um, so if you want to be super cool and ahead of the curve, call yourself player zero instead of player one when the new MMO comes out. Okay. Zero player game. So um, I'm going over here and I can see that these things are happening. However, I'm not getting anything on my screen. So the widget is currently blank. Okay. Um, so I'm hopefully filling it with the information here. Um, why would it be blank? There's no way to display the number. Doesn't know where to display the number because I haven't put anything in the designer. I thought I had put my text block in here. Um, sorry you haven't got is visible check yeah. i haven't got is visible checked don't, don't you need, is that like, this one here is volatile do you need to find the text block to the output um the text block should be bound here yes good guess um so it should be bound here to the output so treasure can change the name of it but then the bind should override and give me a value let's just put a button on screen okay does nothing but let's just put a button on screen oh that's interesting it appears that we don't even have the user interface coming up so um when we run into a problem with blueprints i always like to start back at the start okay um we look at our treasure we say right we're overlapping and um, we're getting the information we send this off to the character we then have the character, okay, um, which is supposed to do what? Can you remember what we said? We're going to use the character to display the user interface, yeah? Yeah. Um, however, the code that I added, I can't actually remember now where I added that code. Um, can anyone remember which blueprint I actually added that code to? Treasure. Not in the treasure, not yet. It was on the on begin. It was on because it was a it was a blank blueprint. But I don't know which one of them it was, was a blank blueprint. blueprint. Yeah. So, what could we? What uh, functionality could we use here to maybe find what it is that we want? Uh, the bottom, uh, search button. Yes. Now we're going to search for what we can remember. Um, was. Uh, any of the nodes or words that we uh, typed in manually that we can remember? Can you search the name of the widget? Oh. Similar, example, begin play. And then if we search here, it gives us event begin play. This one's dead. How can we search further? The widget. Yeah. The widget. We'll click this. Oh, holy smokes. Wow, that's a lot of begin players. Um, do we really want to sit through all of these or do we want to find a better search term? Better search term. So um, when we were programming it before, can we remember what nodes we were using? Um, there was one that summoned the widget. 
There was one that's under the widget. I could search for the widget name. Yeah. Um, so what's my widget name here? Treasure. The widget is called Treasure. My cool UI. My cool UI. Now, hopefully, Unreal Engine haven't wrote my cool UI all over all of the other blueprints. So no results found locally. If I search here, oh, I can see here. And which blueprint is this in? Oh, is that the character that we made? Yeah, that's the character that we made that we're not actually using. Okay. Yeah, so what we can do is um, we can highlight these nodes, Control X to cut, and Control V to paste. Um, but we need the event. Um, how do we get the event, uh, Quinn? It's this event that we need. Right yeah, we can right click. Event, begin, play. Excellent. And then we hook this up. Yeah. And then when we hit play, aha, there's our button and there's our text. One, two, three, 13, 23, 33. Excellent. Okay, okay. Uh, just to wrap this up because um, we're now finished. Uh, let me just go back to the presentation. Next steps, um, solo, I'm going to reflect on what you've learned. Okay, um, so think about that over the break. Uh, then in pairs, uh, verbally recap the elements of a blueprint and how they work using your notes. Okay, uh, in your time, sorry, in your time, um, you're going to complete the Unreal Online Learning, your first hour in Unreal Engine 4, which will guide you through this um, a bit better Okay, at your own pace. Um, for homework, you're going to try the Welcome to Unreal Engine learning path, which the first part of that is the Your First Hour in Unreal. Um, get as far with that as you can. Uh, some of the later stuff does get more difficult, though. Um, for the next session, you're going to answer the following. So what are your top three challenges which you faced with Unreal Engine so far, and which parts of Blueprint are you confused with or can't wrap your head around? Because remember that being honest with what we don't know, don't understand, will really help us um, get to where we need to be faster. Okay, thank you very much. Let's break for lunch.